Welcome back to Spatial Exploits everyone and thanks for joining. In today's episode, we'll be exploring the tactical setup of one of Portugal's finest clubs, Benfica, through the lens of their offensive-minded creative engine at left-back, Alejandro Alex Grimaldo. In only a couple of days, on September 20th, the 5 foot 7 inch tall Grimaldo will celebrate his 26th birthday, and at the start of 2022, he'll also complete 6 years at the Lisbon based club, having moved to Benfica from Barcelona in the 2015-2016 winter transfer window. He was born in Valencia, Spain, and in 2008 he moved to Catalonia and began receiving the world's finest footballing education at Barcelona's youth academy, La Masia. In his tenure at Benfica, his capabilities have increasingly grown due to his consistent presence in the starting 11 in league matches and Champions League fixtures. As Grimaldo continues to gain prominence, he'll also receive the opportunity to make an appearance on the international stage, since he has not yet been capped for his native Spain at the senior level, when the time comes, he'll opt to play for the Portuguese national team since his six years in Lisbon have earned him a Portuguese passport. In order to begin understanding exactly what Alejandro Grimaldo brings to the table, let's first start by exploring his Benfica side's preferred starting 11 and formation under their manager, Georgia Jesus. Tactically under Jesus, Benfica usually deploy a 3-4-2-1 formation, which we'll begin exploring in a few minutes, but sometimes we'll choose to deploy a 3-4-3 formation such as this against teams that are expected to park the bus on them. For example, in their September 11th Primera Liga match against Santa Clara, Jesu switched to a 3-4-3 starting 11 and the three-man attack of Darwin Nunez, Pino, and Everton was able to wreak havoc as Benfica cruised to a dominant 5-0 victory on the day. In a small number of matches, Jesus will also opt for a 4-4-2 formation. On August 29th of 2021, against Tondela in the league, he effectively used this 4-4-2 system to maintain 76% possession as his side worked efficiently for the 2-1 win. This type of tactical maneuvering, depending on the situation at hand, has allowed Benfica to win all five of their matches to open up the 2021-2022 Primeira Liga season, scoring 13 goals themselves and holding their opposition to only two. But the bread and butter formation for Jorge Jesus and Benfica in the majority of their matches is the aforementioned 3-4-2-1 formation. And in their September 14th Champions League group stage opening match against Dinamo Kiev in Ukraine, this Formation came back into the game plan as Jesus and company sought to eke out a win against the Ukrainian champions in Kiev. In that match, the excellent Odysseus was in goal, and he had a great performance in preventing Kiev from scoring two clear-cut chances in the game, as Benfica eked out a hardly contested 0-0 draw. There was a three-man defensive back line featuring Morato as the left center back and Otamendi as the right center back and the team captain on the night, with Jan Vertonghen slotting in between them. In midfield, there was the excellent partnership of Julian Weigel and Joao Mario, who looked to consistently play line-breaking passes and the excellent defensive performance Kiev was displaying on the night. The two wingbacks, Alejandro Grimaldo, was on the left flank and Gilberto was on the right flank. In attack, there was Everton and Rafa Silva on either side of the main target man, Roman Yaremchuk, who was playing back home in Ukraine for the first time since moving to Benfica over the summer. In order to understand what kind of impact Grimaldo would have on the match in Ukraine, it makes sense to look at his overall career statistics courtesy of football reference. As we review these numbers, it's evident that in his final season in Spain, he was able to play quite a few matches and allotted quite a bit of game time. In the winter of the 2015-2016 season, he moved over to Benfica and didn't immediately earn a position in the starting 11, so he only played two matches in that half a season that he had in Portugal. With a full summer preseason under his belt with Benfica in the summer of 2016, at age 20, he went on to play in 14 matches and started all of them, while putting up two goals in the league and also two assists. The next season, it was double the game time, double the matches, and a bit more than double the assist, but the goal amount was a little bit less. The season after that, in 2018 and 19, at age 22, was his best season, where Benfica won the league, and Grimaldo played in all 34 games and allotted quite a few minutes under his belt as he put up 4 goals and the pivotal 12 assists. The few seasons after that, as he gained prominence in Europe and his name became more and more associated with one of the best young left backs in the game and the best left wing back in the game, 
he continued to carve out more starts and more match time. And while the goal scoring dwindled over a bit, the assist numbers were usually in the ballpark of one of the best left backs in the game. This season, he's off to another great start as he looks to build on his one goal and two assist return so far through the overall five league games that Benfica has played. Overall, his net output in Benfica has been 10 goals and 36 assists. This type of a career stat log is indicating to us Grimaldo's abilities as an offensive weapon for Benfica. And as we look at his contributions per 90 according to his relative peers, over the last 365 days, a lot of this talent and ability becomes a lot clearer. Here it's easy to see that while he does have some expected assists and shot creating actions, he is either at the league average or slightly below. But where Grimaldo's contributions come in is his link up play with the amount of passing he has from match to match, as well as his above average pass completion metrics and progressive passing. But where he excels is his excellent dribbling ability where he is able to progressively carry the ball 10.84 times per 90. Ensuring that through those carries, he's able to put Benfica in spots where the attacking trident can take advantage of it. Additionally, the progressive passes received metric also shows that as a left back and as a left wing back at Benfica, he's able to receive passes further up the pitch from his teammates and then continue on to create more progressive carrying and more progressive passing. On the defensive side, he's not particularly notable in fact this is his weakest skill set and something he's looking to improve every season but unfortunately he hasn't quite had it all kind of sync together. He is a great anticipator of the ball and he can read the game pretty well which is why he has a higher than expected interceptions number compared to other left backs in the game. However his passing, his pressures and his tackles he's easily beat off the ball and while he has the speed to make up ground if an offensive player beats him on the dribble, his collective weaknesses in tackling and blocks is usually not able to make up for the fact that he has gotten back to the offensive player in time. Because once he's there, he's not able to do much to close out the missed opportunity. So going back to the game against Dinamo Kiev, one of the things that was very transparent is Kiev started the game in a 4-4-2 low block and they defended like crazy throughout the game to ensure that Grimaldo and Everton and Weigel and Joao Mario never got a chance to have a great passing lane into Yaramchuk for the Ukrainian striker to put his head onto the ball and into the goal. So whenever Grimaldo did have the ball on the left hand flank, immediately the Kiev defenders would be rushing him so he had to make a lot of passes back towards the central defensive partners, in particularly Murato who was closer to Grimaldo on the left hand side. And then Murato would have to then come in under pressure as well because this defender would start pressing him. So then the ball would get offloaded to Vertonghen and then Vertonghen would take a look and by that point Otamendi was also being pressured, Rafa Silva was also under heavy pressure and there wasn't an opportunity for Vertonghen to sort his feet out to have a passing lane open to Rafa or Gilberto who was the right wing back providing the width as the play was occurring in the left half space. So in those instances Vertonghen would have to go all the way back to Odysseus and then have him reset the rest of the play. But in the moments where this type of play was unfolding, one of the things that Weigel and Joao Mario were very, very good at is they would, if they noticed Grimaldo had little to no positioning where he can maneuver around, Mario would actually end up making these runs, dragging his defender with him, or at least making a hard decision whether to stick and pressure Grimaldo and have this man here sort out the fact that Mario is making a run, or live with the fact that now Everton is going to push up here as well. So if the ball then goes from Grimaldo to Weigel to Everton, then that creates immediately more passing lanes because now there's open space here. Because of that, this defender gets dragged this way. Rafa comes in here. Mario keeps making his run. And with Rafa's run coming into the box, his defender's with him here. And Gilberto then starts making this wide run on this end. If the defense for Kiev was backlogged in that way, then Everton had the opportunity to either make a one-time cross into the box but if he was unable to do that, then he would actually by himself start dribbling with the ball into dangerous positions. Additionally, there were opportunities for great link up play on the left hand flank, especially when Weigel and Everton were involved with Grimaldo. So in this situation, if Grimaldo has the ball, he passes it off to Everton and he immediately starts making this run, dragging his defender with him. Everton at that point has the option to go back to Weigel, who will then start to move into these areas that were previously occupied by Grimaldo. 
and because of Grimaldo's speed and Everton's foresight to pass the ball back to Weigel instead of turning around and making his man have a one-on-one -on -one situation against him, Weigel receives the ball from Everton and then has the passing here naturally onto the path of a running Grimaldo where thou where now there's Yuremchuk in the box in prime real estate where a cross well placed can lead to a shot on goal. Again, unfortunately due to Kiev's defensive marking and positioning, they did an excellent job there. There weren't very many of these chances to link up. Another key ability and facet that Grimaldo brings to Benfica is his ability as a dead ball specialist. Which means during set pieces, free kicks, and corner kicks, he's one of the ones that Georgia Jesus trusts to deliver a technically sound ball into the dangerous areas. So depending on the situation, Grimaldo was good at assessing whether it was better to have a sword pass to Everton and let him work out a magical situation between his dribbling skills and the movements of other players in the box, or Grimaldo calling the right set play option and delivering a perfect ball to either Yaremchuk or Vertonghen or Murato or Otamendi, some of the taller players on the team. The fluidity with which Benfica tends to play their matches, it means Everton who starts on the left flank usually is easily interchangeable with Rafa Silva, so Rafa can go here as well, and with Rafa's creative technical abilities, a link up play between him, Weigel, Mario is the exact type of overloading that's needed in the left half space for there to all of a sudden be this creative breakthrough where Grimaldo can then make these runs and then continue sending more and more crosses into the box where Everton can also get onto the end of them and Gilberto or whoever is playing the right wing back positioning, they can also be there on time. So whenever Gilberto is not playing, Pino is usually the player that is responsible in these areas. Yaramchuk being a new signing, Seferovic as well who had a decent Euro 2020 campaign over the summer with Switzerland can also slot in as the main center forward or striker. If Seferovic is not a good option in a given match then Darwin Nunez who's one of the younger players on the team but had a breakthrough season not long ago and has now run into some difficulties in getting his class and quality to show up on a consistent basis. Additionally, if Mario or Weigel need to be replaced or rotated out for rest purposes, then a good option is Pizzi. So Pizzi last season played in a little more than half of the league matches in the Primera Liga, but he actually sent the highest number of crosses on the team, and the second highest was Grimaldo from his left back and left wing back positioning. In most matches that Benfica play, they will be the top dog, so in the Portuguese league, they will be in many many matches where they are handling 60 plus 70 plus percentage possession of the ball. And it's in those matches that there is a low block or a mid block in place from the defensive team. The talents of a Grimaldo, Rafa, Silva on the dribbling end and the qualities of Weigel, Pizzi and Joao Mario on the link up play become very very vital to breaking down such a defense. With Benfica's continued presence in the Champions League, Grimaldo and his continued great performances allow him to gain that necessary exposure to create a opportunity for a big move to one of the biggest clubs in the world whether it's the premier league the bundesliga or the spanish league he's well on his way to becoming one of the highest transfers at left back or left wing back for example a player of grimaldo's quality having grown through the barcelona system would be perfect for manchester city and he would also be perfect for a Arsenal type where Mikel Arteta is essentially trying to build out Arsenal from Pep Guardiola's blueprint. And although that's not going all that well at the moment, Arteta through the summer transfer window is beginning to compile a team with young players that are able to eventually grow into the tactical setup and framework of the Pep Guardiola total football philosophy. Grimaldo with his passing touch and his dribbling ability can also play out wide as a traditional left back and provide that width. Additionally, in a setup like Manchester City where Alexander Zinchenko or Joao Cancelo on the left flank are able to tuck into the midfield to build up progression would be the exact type of things that Grimaldo could bring to a Manchester City or Arsenal or even Barcelona if he decides to go back to the club that gave him his youth academy exposure. With Benfica's excellent start in the league, it will be interesting to follow how Jorge Jesus manages the squad from both a rotational perspective up top with the attacking trident as well as some of the things he does with the wingbacks Grimaldo and Gilberto at the moment to ensure that the two goals allowed in the league for Benfica continues to be the type of indicator of a defensive reliability and solidity at the back. With Grimaldo doing his thing on the left flank, 
Benfica should continue to be very, very dominant in the Portuguese league as the season wears on. In the Champions League, however, with the nil-nil draw to Kiev, they do have Bayern and Barcelona to look ahead to. And to get through those matches with a win or even a draw, they will need to definitely rely on the talents of Alejandro Grimaldo to provide his dribbling, his passing, and his creativity from match to match if Benfica want to progress out of the Champions League group and make a deep run similar to the one that Porto had last season in Europe's most prestigious club competition.